Hello, and welcome to the Aggie News Station. Thank you for tuning in this week. My name is Nani, and I'll be discussing the African Migratory Lotus, or also known as the Lotissa Migratoria. My name is Emily, and I will be discussing the plague vector of the Xenophilo Cheopis, which is commonly known as the Oriental Rat Flea. We will be discussing the historical outcomes these insects had on the world and debating which one changed history the most. The African migratory lotus exists all over the world. They are mostly located in Africa, primarily at the Sahara Desert, but mostly existing along the Niger River. This species is known for traveling in very large groups. Actually, from 1891 to 1903, a massive plague of the African migratory lotus came to be, and also with another outbreak from 1928 to 1941. This species used usually is one of two things. They either decide to live independently or travel in very large groups. This species is distinctly designed with a brownish or greenish color in the stage of solitaire. However, sometimes they can be spotted with the more skin natural colors for their body. Lotuses in general feed primarily on crops and damage agricultural products all over the world. For when these insects are hatched, they immediately band together with the lotuses next to them traveling in a pack. This species tends to be very active during the day, and rest at night. One fun fact is that a lotus pack can have several billion insects all in one swarm. Not only do they devour the crops, but they reproduce very quickly. This has caused chaos specifically in Africa where things where there is a shortage in food and crops for people to consume. One unique quality about the lotuses is that they can survive in very dry climates. This means that places are very hot, can, can't stop the insects from causing a mass destruction. Similarly, the oriental rat flea can also be found in various locations throughout the world in diverse habitats. They are primarily found when rats or other rodents are present. The oriental rat flea is most commonly known for being a vector of disease-causing bacteria called Yersinia pestis, the same bacteria that caused the infamous and deadly bubonic plague in the 14th century. Oriental rat fleas undergo a simple metamorphosis life cycle, transforming from an egg to a larvae to a pupa, and finally to an adult. A female flea can lay up to 400 le- eggs in her lifetime and typically lays her egg on a host such as a rat or in the surrounding nest area around of the host. Flea larvae typically feed on any organic material they can find near them and adult rat fleas feed on the blood of their host. Adult rat fleas feed on blood by biting their host and sucking the blood that comes to the surface. When a rat flea bites their host, their saliva has a special substance that prevents the blood from clotting. Oriental rat fleas transmit their plague-causing bacteria by feeding on the blood of an infected host animal and then transmitting it when they go to feed on another animal. Fleas will essentially regurgitate a small amount of infected blood into their new host while biting them and transmit the bacteria into their blood. One fun fact that aids oriental rat fleas in being vectors of plagues is their ability to jump incredibly far distances, approximately up to 200 times the length of their body. This jumping ability enables them to jump from host to host, increasing the rate at which they spread diseases. Although rat fleas typically prefer rats as their host, they will feed on the blood of many different mammal species, complicating the spectrum of what diseases they can spread. This causes fleas to have a severe economic and health impact on human society. They are a complicated pest to manage given they undergo multiple life cycles. You could treat a flea infestation in a controlled area, but there could be various fleas at differing stages, allowing for the ability of reinfestation. Yes, while I do understand the severity of the effects of the rat fleas have on livestock and animals, the African migratory lotus has single-handedly been the major cause of agricultural downfall for the crops and what we use as humans to get our nutrients. When talking about the history of these two insects, the African migratory lotus has world-renowned plagues distinguished by their destruction. The African migratory lotus has caused several communities to experience famine due to the crop shortage. Africa is where the African migratory lotus mostly resides, and it is already an area in which starvation is a priority when it comes to changing their ways. Due to the plague from 1891 to 1903 and another from 1928 to 1941, the areas affected by the lotuses have struggled greatly. Are these occurrences happening in these times of history? The areas affected by them went through periods of starvation and famine. These are, they struggled to provide for their families and keep their communities healthy and stable. 
Ever since these plagues, these communities have had to completely reconstruct the way that they farm. By this, I mean they found better tactics and seasons best to grow crops. By the lotuses limiting the crops, the farms that were not affected by the lotuses were actually continuing to produce and had to sustain the remainder of the communities. You make a valid point. The negative impacts locusts have on agriculture is severe, and the food shortages and famines they've been known to cause are devastating. However, you can't build an agricultural infrastructure without healthy and able people. The plague that the Oriental Rat Fleet caused is historical. It killed a significantly large amount of people and notably wiped out over one third of the entire population in Europe at this time. The plague, also known as the Black Death, had a significantly high mortality rate, hence the word death in its name. Nearly half the population contracted the plague and they believed it was not a matter of if they were going to die, but when. The amount and rate at which people were dying from this plague caused by the bacteria found in this flea was so significant that they could not keep up with the with properly burying bodies and resorted to building mass grave sites to bury the victims of this plague. Due to the death of so many people, there was a significant labor shortage because of people either dying or abandoning the agricultural field in which they worked or lived. I do to your point. People come first in a sense that you need to you need people to keep this earth running smoothly. However, if humans are so nutritionally weak to the point that they aren't well enough or able enough to li- to labor due to food storages, there will be no one to work the remaining fields and tend to the animals. During these plagues, several livestock became diseased and due to people moving to different areas in search of food or just straight up ne- neglecting because they couldn't get to the livestock in order to feed them. The swarms of lotuses can range up to 900 miles long. Around a third of a mile of a swarm of lotuses can eat the amount of crops that would feed 35,000 people. Vegetation is the key aspect to keeping people alive. Without the ability to farm, communities start crumbling down. In 1874, the crop damage cost was over $200 million in crops. People were forced to move from their homes and travel east. This plague alone changed history forever. I understand your perspective. Nutrition does indeed contribute to a decline in productivity and further exacerbates the food crisis. However, as you mentioned before, not all farms were affected and communities adapted their agricultural practices and were able to sustain themselves with the resources available. The plague caused by the Oriental rat flea, on the other hand, was massively widespread, stretching from Asia to Europe. The disease spread fast and the mortality rate was high. There was essentially no cure for those infected. The disease is believed to have originated in Asia with the Mongols and was spread along trade routes like the Silk Road until it eventually made its way to Europe. So we were talking about a widespread deadly disease across many different countries and continents affecting international trade and economic productivity. Notably, the Black Death is in some regards considered the first instance of biological warfare. It was widely acknowledged by people that the plague was highly transmissible and extremely deadly. The Mongols, in their attempt to invade other regions, would send infected people into port cities to deliberately infect the people of the region. In addition, there were instances of infected fleas being used as warfare in World War II as well. It is quite significant that this plague was used as a weapon of war, and it contextualizes just how deadly the plague caused by rat fleas was. While the locusts had extreme impacts on agricultural communities, they were able to adapt and rebuild. On the other hand, the Black Death was not something that humans could easily adapt to in a short amount of time, which explains the Mongols' reasoning behind exploiting the plague. Arguably, the fact that the plague caused by rat fleas and the physical fleas themselves were used as biological warfare in historically renowned wars underscores the significant influence Oriental rat fleas had on history. The African migratory lotus played a huge role in the history of Africa, yet also as we learn from the things of the past, we understand the important roles it plays for the future of crops and vegetation. Without experiencing the things that hurt the past, we will never know how to make the future better. These insects are important to study because they're a huge part of history. With the occurrence of two very massive plagues occurring in Africa where millions of dollars of crops were demolished by a swarm of spreading over 900 miles, took over a part of Africa, it has completely reconstructed the way that they farm. They suffered for years trying to rebuild the farms at which at one point produced food and nutrients for communities in Africa, now leaving these people in the dust. The history of lotuses have brought on new research involving pesticides and how they can be best used to prevent another plague from ever happening again. 
By letting the rest of the world in on these issues involving lotuses, they are able to educate other parts of the world on the importance of finding the, an answer that solves the plagues. Through writing articles, news reports on this issue, donors are able to find the importance in helping out, and this may be the way that we save crops for people in Africa. Over the history, overall, the history of the African migratory lotus is very important, and people all over the world should become educated on the importance of the research done to prevent plagues. In conclusion, the Oriental rat flea had a monumental influence on history. The flea has been used in research to not only understand the implications of the historical plague it was responsible for, but also to develop clinical treatments against diseases this flea has been known to cause. Additionally, due to the unfortunate reality that this flea can still be used as a biological weapon, researchers continue to conduct case studies by evaluating worst case scenario models to analyze the size of threat the flea causes in the event of it being used as biological warfare. In today's day and age, mitigation tactics are used to reduce outbreaks of disease from fleas. Mitigation tactics like flea medication help reduce the spread of fleas and lowers the risk of disease in both our pets and us. There is continuous research on this flea because the diseases it is responsible for evolve and become resistant to treatments. This is quite significant. The research conducted on this flea underscores public efforts to prevent a disastrous plague from ever happening again. It is crucially important to understand the historical implications of this flea and understand the importance behind continuous research conducted.